We might as well. Does anyone in the crew want to come smoke weed with Cheech and Chong? Ladies and gentlemen, it is Something's Burning, and this is a dream episode. This is an absolute dream episode. I am here with comedic legends, Cheech and Chong. Hey, I am you. telling you right now, gentlemen, mm -hmm. if you told me in ninth grade, yeah. when we got done school, went over to Cayman's house, and we smoked weed, and we watched Up and Smoke. And, I, you know, I wasn't, when you're, there's a point in life where you don't understand what laughing at a movie is. You just know, like, a good movie, but then you don't get comedy. Uh -huh. And when... The cop said, uh, where's your license? And you said, I think it's on the back of the car. <laughs> I laughed hysterically. And it was like the first time I, ge I genuinely remember laughing at a movie. A and, and for real, laughing out loud. Yeah. And we laughed so hard. We smoked weed that day. Me, him, Sal Carinante, Sean Hooker. Shout out to Jesuit High School. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why it, it got so many views. Because you would laugh so hard, you'd miss a lot of the jokes. And so you had to go back and, and see it again. Yeah? yeah, it's the truth is you'd watch it over. I mean, there are parts of things that you guys must have come up just giggling to each other. Mexican American. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I ever knew a Mexican until I moved to LA. I sang that song all through high school. <laughs> we sang that song all through high school. I like to get up early, but they don't have to. <laughs> it is such an honor. Thank you. To sit with you guys. And, uh, and, and so today, and I'll just get all the business out of the way, right. I am doing, because I gotta be honest with you, Tommy, I didn't even know you were Asian until I was in college. I just, I just. Chong is a really good hint. <laughs> <laughs> just, but I just figured just Cheech and Chong were like two Mexican guys. I yeah. never, I never yeah. put two and two together. Well, and Chongo we, is a slang is for monkey. Monkey, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. And your, your dad was Chinese? Yeah. And so I am doing Mexican Asian fusion for oh, you guys. That's okay. right. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing taco egg rolls. Oh. And then I am making. And this is, I've, I've been working on Did you know that 90% of the, the, the restaurants in LA especially are Mexican uh, uh, sushi cooks? Really? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have sushi until I was like 25. Wow. Yeah. Where, they didn't have it where you were Florida. from? Florida. Florida. No. Cheech uh, introduced me to sushi. Yeah. Because for a lo long time, it was illegal for anybody but Japanese to have, eat sushi. Yeah, in, in, to eat in sushi? Japan, in Japan, Japan town. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, Cheech's dad's a cop, right? Yeah, a cop. And, and your so dad's the, a cop? He was. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. So wait, what did your, hold on, let me tell you what I'm making. I'm making Bidia Ramen. I'm making Bidia Ramen. Okay. What did your dad say when the movies came out? Hey, give me some of that free shit so I can give it to my juvenile delinquent people. <laughs> and can, that's what he'd do. He says, hey, give me some of the free albums. Hey, you, hey, you guys want a Cheech and Chong album for free? What's going on over here? Who's that guy? <laughs> Tell me what, where you were last Saturday, you know? No, really? he was LAPD 30 years. LAPD 30 years. Well. So he was, so wait, you, you grew up in LA. Yeah, born wait, and raised. Where, where was, like, what part of LA? South Central. For real? Yeah. So it was all black neighborhood when I lived in there, but now it's all Central American. Was it your nickname? Hey, Mexican? Yo, yo Mexican. Yo, Mexican. Oh, <laughs> it was, yo, was Mexican. this predominantly black it neighborhood? Was, <laughs> it was all black neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. What did you find your fan base? What was Cheech and Chong's fan base? What was I always found? Oh, we, no, we found it here. Really? We started in Canada, and yeah. uh, I didn't even know Cheech was Mexican until we came to L.A. <laughs> I, seriously. For real? Because he was up there dodging the draft. and I wasn't dodging. They knew where I was. <laughs> I told them where I was. <laughs> no, he wasn't dodging the draft. No, he was, uh, well, he was part of a secret army just in case the Viet Cong attacked from Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, he was ready. Yeah. That was ready. fucking great. But, but when we were, we were down here, we had two shows to do. And the first show, we did not go over well because it was in a dance club and people had to stop dancing in order to watch our comedy. And so they, oh. were, they weren't that thrilled. And so then <clears throat> Cheech and I came up with a bit that, that they could uh, relate to, and which was the introduction of the lowrider. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I heard you talk about car. that. You guys talk about that one time. Yeah. Wasn't it an old vaudevillian thing where you yeah. saw the guy... 
to explain what they were going to see. Well, it's an old black bit. Uh, Sir Pineapple, uh, this black comedian, used to do a bit where he would take a girl on a date. But in order to, to show the audience that he had a car, yeah. he would mime watching it. And so I, I remember that from my, my vaudeville days. Really? And, and so then I... You were in vaudeville? I showed Cheech. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was a fancy name for burlesque. Oh, yeah. Which or was titty bar. This is what we did. Yeah, because that's what comedy clubs were back then was like, it was, there was no, when you guys started, I don't think people understand this or respect this enough. Not only what you guys were doing wasn't established yet, but it was like, it was free form, like really alternative. It was just strip clubs, and then you guys would go up, people would be in the middle of seeing titties, and then going, wait, what the fuck's this? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, I, as much as I say I've, I had it rough in comedy, I never had it like you guys. Uh, like you, well, you guys, you guys got old school fucked by the industry, like old, like old school ripped off by a manager, old school ripped off by the fucking, like you have the legendary most, probably five most stoner movies, and you and and it was when Hollywood was fucking shady, yeah. And it's and and now it's like you look. I'm, I'm sure you probably look at someone like my career and go, "You're welcome." Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. We figured out managers for you. We figured out agents. Keep going, my son. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys figured out merch. That's the crazy thing. Is the way the world's going right now? Yeah. With marijuana, you guys are the Everest. Yeah. You guys have. Such a lineup of shit. It's right here. We're gonna go through it in a second. Yeah. Oh, you got a shirt too. Shirt. Dude. This, these, these crock pots yeah. are the best thing in the world. Yeah. You can pu put it in there, 45 minutes, and it cooks everything so fast. Yeah. It's like a pressure cooker, really. Let's go through your merch. Okay. I'm dying to see because you guys really are kind of at the forefront of all of this. This is insane. This is in this is the chicholada. Uh -huh. Cannabis infused, fifty. Oh, they've got a button here. Milligrams. Yeah, but you don't do it all at once. No <laughs> shit. So the thing, <laughs> the, the thing that makes it uh, uh, viable is the flip top is reusable. Who? What is this? Oh, this. Oh, is... that's Judge's water. Is it vodka? This is your vodka. There, yeah. There is vodka in there. Yes, but the big. Uh... Shut up. Is there weed in here? No, not yet. No in here? Oh, get some weed. Uh, let's, okay. let's smoke weed. Do you guys smoke weed? Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. a dumb question. Is this on? There's some good oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is like, you guys have so much great merch. This is a vodka bottle that turns into a bong when you're done with it. Yeah. Okay. And, it's, and it, we send you the tools in order to <laughs> cut through the glass in order to make it a bong. Shut up. All in, all included. Oh, this is it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is crazy. Isn't it good? It judges what it comes from one of those scenes in, the, in Up in Smoke where he, we're in court or, and the judge is going blah, 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 and he goes up and he drinks the judge's water. And he goes, hey, man, it's fucking vodka. <laughs> <laughs> so that has fucking vodka in it. And, and when you finish the vodka, you can drill a hole, put your bong in there, and, and now it's a bong. That uh, I only know the Corsican brothers because of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like I, that is, you guys have such legendary movies, and to find out that when you guys did Up in Smoke, it was predominantly improved, and based off all your sketches you guys did as a team, uh -huh. and that you directed it yourself, and that it was, that is so impressive. Oh, that's good. Well, huh? is there THC in your vodka? Uh, no, that's just regular vodka. Well, let's try it. Yeah. Do you mind if I take it? Yeah, go ahead. It's yours. <laughs> it's all your own. I mean, vodka. That's good vodka. And I know vodka. Yeah. That's good vodka. Yeah. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats. Save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concert, comedy, and theater. I'll tell you right now, my buddy Jelly Roll, September 6th, is playing at the Crypto.com Arena. I use Game Time to get my tickets. I love buying tickets. I love supporting the artists I love. We did it for Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, we did it for Steely Dan. We did it for the Eagles. And I'll be there for Jelly Roll Show. You want to, and, and, and you want to plan the event. Get the tickets. It's so easy. It's so quick. 
Honestly, you're going to have to double check your work. You're going to be like, that was easy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BURNING for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code B U R N I N G for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. What was it? What was buying weed like back in the day? I don't know. I never bought any. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, the only time I ever bought weed was when I, the, when it got legal for medical. Yeah. And we had a dispensary on uh, on Santa Monica across from Barney's Beanery. I'm going to smoke before I start cooking. I, w- I would love to go through. Oh, oh We're okay. going to be here oh, for a while, are okay. we? Okay, <laughs> sure. If that's okay. We're, we're here with you. We'll smoke with you. Oh, Famous please. last words. Oh, shit, I forgot the album. <laughs> yeah. I do that all the time now. I, I swear. Shelby does it all the time. I do it all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I have to look in the garbage can to see what I almost had for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you guys are you guys big cookers at home? I do. Wait, you, I feel like I've he seen doesn't. you cook. I probably uh, like on like TV or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I cooked in hotels in my youth. Really? Yeah, in Canada when I was in Canada. But I cook every day now. Because uh, there's going to be a show called "What Are the Odds?" A Mexican in a Kitchen. Would you guys like oh, to try sure. some marijuana? Well, as long as you insist. That's it, guys. I can die a happy man. That's it. Usually, this costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, I was at a charity thing. And somehow I missed the. It was a two night thing. I missed the first night because I fell asleep. So I wanted to give them something to the auction off, that that would you know raise money for them. So I came up the smoke a joint with Cheech and Cheech and Chong, oh. and that was the auction item. We, it, we sold three tickets at fifteen thousand dollars a piece. In this auction, I said, my new, my new item, man. Are you serious? I don't need a signed autographed uh, script or a picture or anything, but we sell it every time. That's cool. Yeah, well, I mean, there is like, like, who have you guys gotten high with that you're like, have you guys gotten high with Willie Nelson? Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He gives me Willie weed, Mm. and it's the greatest golf weed. Yeah. And he he gives me a big bag of it every time I play. Oh, hey, here's some Willie weed. (laughs) You guys go... I feel like I just, I feel like I'm skating with Wayne Gretzky. Because I was like, I shouldn't have lit the whole joint. This I might get fucking wasted. We smoke with Kareem a lot. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Yeah. A lot in the day. Are you serious? Yeah. He was, What's uh, he, he's smart as shit. Very. Is he? He, 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 uh, he, he actually, uh, you know, in, he was very influenced by, uh, by the weed in jazz. Yeah. You know, it, it all comes from jazz. That's how I got into it. A guy from uh, Calgary came back from L.A. with a Lenny Bruce record and a joint. Turned, you know, it was my present, and that wow. changed my life. Well, your guys' sketches were like jazz. Yeah. yeah. Like, even in the movies, yeah. they never felt too scripted. It was always, like... Yeah, organic. Really organic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, when you... like. I watched it again last night, that scene in the car. I watched it again. And when you go, here, just take these. And then you're looking, you're not watching him at all. You guys are doing two, totally, as actors, you're in two separate places, and then you're like, hold on, I gave you the wrong one. <laughs> it's such a great moment. Yeah, yeah. Was that just like some synergy that you guys had together that you accrued on stage? It was a live show. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we did. Oh, that. you did that enough on a live show. Oh, we had we done did. that five hundred times before we, we got we to did the movie. For but real. There, but there's some things that are in the movie that we did for the first time when we did it for the movie. Like yeah. what? Uh, it's, hey, on it's, it's on, on the bumper. It's on the bumper. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the first time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's such a great fucking. Yeah. It's so hard to translate what's funny on stage on the screen. Yeah, it's yeah. It's so difficult. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my favorite. Bit in that is when your beanie is pulled over your eyes. And I'm blind. I'm blind. <laughs> that was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. the on the when we did it for the movie, that's the first time we did yeah. that. For real? Yeah. 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 Were you guys? Were you guys the first stoner comedy? Yeah. I like would there think. wasn't anything before that. No. Now you look and you've got like. Have you seen the, any of the, the closest, ones after? The, the closest was the Furry Freak Brothers comic book. The what? Furry Freak Brothers. Have you ever thought about one more movie? 
Yeah. Yeah, we got a, a, a movie documentary coming out in uh, South by Southwest. For real? Yeah, it's in April. March. Uh, March is it? Or March or April? March. So? We're really, yeah, March twentieth, I think. We're showing it there at, at South by Southwest. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be shown there, and it's uh, supposed to be. I haven't seen it, but it's supposed to be pretty good. It is pretty good. You saw it. Right? I did. Yeah. Well, you guys are such a. It's you know, what was the hardest part about keeping a partnership? Because I have a part, I have a business partner that's a comedian, and it's there's times where you you do butt heads and you have different creative the only choices. Thing, the only and, thing that will tear any anybody apart is success. Once yeah. you get success, uh, yeah, yeah. that that usually uh, is like for a lot of people that's the end. You know that yeah. uh, let's do something else now. You know? Money. It's it's, it's constraint. I think because it's constraint of actually not killing the other guy when you really want to. Yeah. You know, and then you go by that pass and, oh, it was okay. And it's just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. But it's constraint because... See, in the beginning, you, 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 you're you just trying to survive. Yeah. It's almost you're easier when you're just trying to, to survive. Trying to make the next meal, the rent, get the rent paid or we had pay a, off the car, whatever. We, we had to make a dollar fifty every day. That was the goal. We had yeah. to somehow get our hands on a dollar fifty every day. And then... And, uh, Eventually, uh, yeah, and we'd eat. We get to the point where we, you become international movie stars. And it, ca it comes to the point, I think this is really interesting. I heard Slash say this to me one time about why Guns N' Roses broke up. And he said, we all went on tour, and we were all pretty much on tour in a bus. Yeah. And then when we came home, we found out we were millionaires, and we had to decide what kind of millionaire we wanted to be. Uh -huh. And he was like, you know, and... What the, he goes, the craziest thing is Axel wanted to be a Malibu millionaire. He was like, I was just like, who the fuck wants to move? I want to live in the, I thought we'd all live in the Hollywood Hills next to each other. <laughs> That's, he started out in the Hollywood Hills, right? And moved to Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he followed me. I went to Malibu first. Yeah, he went first. to Malibu first, yeah. Oh, I would, uh, I would, I would. In my, my second wife, I'll move to Malibu. I loved, oh yeah. Yeah, my second wife. I remember those days. Nick, Nick um, Nolte lives in my house now, or my old house. For real? Yeah. I have someone I'd like to party with. I have a list of people I'd like to party with. Uh, this one, I just marked You better hurry up. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll introduce you. <laughs> and so, so I moved from Hollywood to escape bad influences during the day. Yeah. And, and so I moved to the farthest end of Malibu, and, and, and it, was, it was the Trancas Bar. And who do I find the Trancas Bar? Nick Nolte, Jan Michael Vincent. Jan uh, Michael Vincent? Uh, who was the other one? Uh, uh, Jerry Williams. Well, what's great about you guys is that the partying never got in front of the work. No, no. Like the work was it, it always. It did, but we were too poor to <laughs> to keep up the habit. No, we made ourselves uh, allergic to cocaine. No, really, because we, we, it was fucking up our act, you know. Yeah. And then we said, and okay, we we're allergic to this, right? Right. Yeah. And then from then on, never. We Wait. never never did the coke. Yeah. We had one rule, you know. People used to ask us, "What kind of drugs do you do?" What's your favorite strain? Yeah. And my answer always was anything given to me by a naked woman. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mantra for years. Marijuana does enhance sex, I think. Oh, it does. I really. Well, it makes you forget. You forget to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you guys write high? No. 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 Yeah, probably write high when we're. Uh, uh, Apart, yeah, you know, but when we are in the studio and stuff, they were just. How did that work back then? So someone like someone would come in and give you, like when you did your first album, they would give you like, say five hundred thousand dollars to do. <laughs> <laughs> they That's would, good. How much would they give? How much would they give you? Well, when we signed our first contract, and we it was the day we met Lou Adler. Okay, I want to be. I want to work with you guys. I send for Abe Summer, the lawyer. He's downstairs. He comes up. They present us with a contract, and he says, "I'm going to give you a thousand dollars." And and Tommy reaches for the pen because we had <laughs> Zippo money. Yeah. And he reaches for the pen. And I go. I said, "Wait a minute. I have to talk about." I said, uh, "Mr. Adler, it seems that the, well, there's two of us, so we'll need two thousand dollars." <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> you guys are like businessmen like me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but we did, and, and a recorder. 
Uh, really? Uh, tape recorder. Wait, yeah, you, yeah you, we told them, we told them, yeah, that's what we needed, a little, little portable tape recorder. I heard you guys, the, the uh, what is it, Dave's not here? Yeah. yeah, well, that was it. That was done. That was the tape recorder. That was the tape recorder. Yeah. yeah. That was our first bit. And, and it, that was the only time we ever used a tape recorder. Because <laughs> after that, we just went right to And it uh, wasn't tape. supposed to be a bit. No, what happened, uh, we were going to rehearse with the uh, with, uh, little tape recorder. Yeah. And so we're back in a mixed-up room. And do you remember Charlie Chaplin movies? Of course. Uh, do you remember him? There's, he's always sitting in the doorway of a little, little house, a little shed. Yeah. Yeah, well, that little house... Okay was converted into uh, what A&M they call Studios. a mixed-down room. Really? Oh, and, really? And that was uh, the little house that we recorded all our, our albums in because it w- we didn't need a whole studio. And really? Because so, so, we were figuring out how to do it, first yeah, of all. Yeah, so we we're, yeah. were rehearsing. We we're going to rehearse a bit. And uh, I had the, tape, the little tape recorder inside the studio. And, and uh, Cheech went outside, but it, the door locked from inside. And so when he was outside, he's in the hot uh, little... August sun. Little area there yeah, yeah. where the sun was beating down. It was hot as can be. But Cheech, uh, because he's a method actor, you know, he got all dressed up in his outfit. He was supposed to be a dope dealer coming to, to, to make a delivery. Yeah. And, and so when he knocked on the door, I didn't know if the tape recorder was... was uh, working or not, so I paused. And, and, and then, it, then he knocked again, and I seen the, the needle move. And so then I started the bit, and I said, who is it? And, and then Cheech went into his bit, you know, it's me, man, I, you know. Hurry up, Wait, that's hurry. all just organic? Yeah. Well, that's anyway, all just organic? So anyway, I, I, uh, so I, I, I was trying to see if that tape recorder was working. And so I, I was looking at the tape recorder, and then Cheech, are you backing away from this? I, I, I've cooked before. So anyway, Cheech knocked again, and uh, I. Uh, then I said, "Well, we'll start the bit over again." So I said, "Who is it again?" And I could I could hear him being annoyed. Yeah. In his voice, you know, I'm supposed to open the door and let him in, and it's hot. <laughs> and so I left him outside, and so every just time wanted he wanted to say how long he could torture me. <laughs> and that became the recording. Yeah. And that became the bit. Yeah. And so I kept yeah. saying, who is it? And he kept saying, and then, then finally he goes, it's Dave. <laughs> and I said, Dave? And I could hear him in his voice where, you know, finally he's going to open the door for me. And I go, Dave? And he said, yeah. And then I said, Dave's not here. <laughs> and he blew it. He, but he didn't break character. Nah. He, yeah. he said, I'm Dave, man. Open the fucking door. It's got to go here, man. And we're, but we're, we're outside in the middle of A&M Studios, and everybody that's going to work, and they're walking back and forth, and they're, who are these two motherfuckers out here banging on the door in the courtyard? <laughs> really? Because they didn't know who we were. We just showed up one day. <laughs> oh, God. That that's crazy. Crazy. That's almost like... Yeah. It's folklore that I feel like disappears. Yeah. Because that I don't think people understand how great, like... Your albums were, Red, Fro- Red Fox's albums were, they were party albums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were like what people listen to on a Friday well, that, night. That, that's what inspired us to, to do the record, D- uh, me, you know, because I, I had heard Red Fox. Do you remember, <laughs> Eddie, do you remember the Dolomite yeah, albums? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of the comedians in, in um, uh, their, their albums consisted of recordings of their live show. Yeah. That, uh, Steve Martin, George Carlin, uh, all, everybody. Did you? What we were those? went into the studio. We were musicians, and so we were used to working in the studio. Did they ever have any horrible Cheech and Chong sitcoms they came with you guys at? Oh yeah, I we bet you guys got pitched. We turned down yeah, yeah. T- Tartikoff. Tartikoff. I mean, they had a guy. Brandon Tartikoff for everyone listening. And this is like they, if he ran NBC for like ever. He yeah, created yeah. the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and all that. Like, what was the writer? Jimmy Comac. Jimmy Comax, Tartikoff wanted to do a Cheech and Chong television show, and so he had uh, Jimmy Comax haul us around for a couple of months. And uh, when we turned down the show, then they uh, told us that they were doing the Freddie Prince. Yeah. uh, uh, Wait, Freddie Prince? Chico and the Man. 
Yeah. Chico and the Man. Uh, there was kind of the, it was, it was he got the, the inspiration from bits that We used to do uh, our, ours with the old man in the park. And Jaco Max was nice about it. He came up and told me, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're using your bit. That's crazy. You guys, I mean, do you ever, do you ever wake up and, and think? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> oh. I wake up with, like, I wake up sometimes with survivor's remorse that I'm either successful and I had friends that didn't make, get successful or that I have so much and people have so little. But more importantly, you guys have lived such a rich, rich life with so many people that aren't here anymore, and you still are. Hey. And, you, and like you guys, you're 85 is fucking insane. 86. 86. That's, that's, when, that's when they go insane. Yeah, right about that age. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. And, and you know what's amazing? What's that? I still don't know how to use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Anything computer, I just hand it to my wife here because it's amazing. Yeah. Make it I hand it to my three year old. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Here's the trouble our is I never get it back. <laughs> here's our appetizer. <laughs> it is. It is. Once again, fusion. Uh -huh. uh, Taco egg rolls. All right. So that so I hope they're good. Me too. I'll be the first judge. You feel free to double dip. We shared a joint. Oh, I'll pat, I'll light that joint again if you okay. want. Okay. Yeah, I do. Uh, pick out the good one. Now I saw your act. So okay. Let's be record. These are definitely white guy tacos. <laughs> this is just ground beef. <laughs> I, I saw your act yesterday for the first time too oh, yeah? on TV, and. Uh, uh, amazing. I was and blown away. Mean. I was really blown away, especially with your wardrobe. I, it was so genius, man. A lot of bold decisions going on. And, and then I realized what you did <laughs> by not mentioning it. You, I got, you had everybody hung up, like me, going, <laughs> Does, doesn't he know he's naked? Yeah. <laughs> the best compliment I've ever gotten was uh, David Letterman. Yeah. said, he goes, I watched this guy, Burt Kreischer, absolutely hilarious, but he takes his shirt off and he never mentions it. And he goes, I'm sitting there the whole time going, what, why is this shirt off? Genius. Genius. I, there's, me, I wish I could uh, take any credit for any forethought in that whatsoever. I honestly just... That's the improv. I, it, it was something I just did on the road and I was, I was bored. That's improv. This show is sponsored by DraftKings NBA fans. With the playoffs kicking off, it's time to bring the hoops action into the palm of your hand with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 on anything will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using my promo code BURNING. The crown is yours. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. DraftKings has something for the returning customer as well. Score a no-sweat NBA bet. If sports betting not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code BURNING. That's my promo code BURNING. And bet just $5 on any wager and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BURNING only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Do you remember the first time you smoked pot? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the first time you smoked pot? Oh, yeah. Where was it? At a jazz club in and, Calgary. Really? I was 17 years old. The bass player, Eddie Ma, came back from L.A. with a joint a Lenny Bruce record. Did I fucking ask this question already? No, I said it already. <laughs> no, he already told the answer I told already. You but. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm high. So wait, but, how but, did you guys but, meet? <laughs> Let me finish. The, uh, weed was unheard of in Calgary. In yeah. fact, we used to get stopped smoking, and, and the cops would be looking for beer. Yeah. And they didn't know what it smelled like or anything, and so we, we'd good. be not bad, right? Yeah. Standing at the side of the road practicing our, you know, drunk things. And, yeah. And, he, and he's in looking for for beer, and there was none. That's uh, yeah. My first time smoking weed, it didn't it didn't affect me. You didn't really know how to inhale, really. And, you know, it's just like, and we were getting shit weed. We got at a pool hall on, on, in Will, Wellsboro. And, uh, and then you start going like, oh, yeah, it works. This is a very, especially when you get too high and you realize this is a, have you ever got, do you guys ever, like, freak out? Uh, no. no, never freaked out. Yeah, me either then. <laughs> it's a rhyme. 
It's a ride. It's a ride. Thank you very yeah. much. Best way to, to kick back and enjoy it. My favorite part about weed is when you smoke weed and you get like, you have crazy thoughts where you go, like I was in my backyard and I was like, these are my trees. Like they weren't planted for me, but th ultimately they were. <laughs> like, they, like they didn't know they were going to be mine. And maybe they're not mine forever, but they're mine right now. And because I'm you noticed them. Because I fucking noticed them. <laughs> oh. On weed, huh? Good, <laughs> good one. These uh, these turned out pretty good. These are good. They're not bad. They're that, the egg roll wrapping They're is delicious. Is really good, yeah. and uh, and, and I, it gets crispy really. I'm excited for this ramen because I think it's going to present oh, yeah. very well. Do you guys like eggs? Oh, yeah. Is there yeah. more coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it cooking right here. It's almost done. See, cool. that's why I'm losing weight. I can only eat. that's it. Yeah, I'm done. I wish I could do that. I'm done. Just Wait, it. when you get 86, <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. What's it like to be 86? Incredible. Yeah? If, if everything works, and so far mm. everything works. Yeah. yeah. Did you think you'd ever live this long? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll I've known. I've known all my life I've been, that I was special. There was something, something going on. Yeah. And uh, all my life. And, and especially now, because now it's time to reflect. You know? The trick is... We have the ability to control our thoughts. Being able to control your thoughts means that you can be happy all the time. You know, that's, that's so fucking, I got into a fight with my wife one morning and I got, I was upset and I was going to get a Starbucks and I thought, I don't have to be upset if I don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Like this is, I don't need to be upset no. at her. No. Like this, and I go, if, especially if I just take a second and go, so this is this, but then think of all the things she's done that have made me happy, <laughs> then this looks like nothing. Like if you said, I go, this, I can wipe this out easy. I'll just think about this. Yeah. And I did that for like five minutes. I got to Starbucks yeah. and I was like, I'm You're fucking done. perfect. See, that's why you come up with the idea of not wearing your shirt. It's so clever. Like I, I watched Jim Carrey I, when... I, we uh, met in Aspen, you know, and they're honoring Jim Carrey, and they give him a standing ovation. Well, he never left the stage. <laughs> he stood out there for at least 10, 15 minutes until oh, everybody yeah. went, oh. <laughs> they That's... left. It was so genius because people love him so much, and they're standing up and they're clapping and clapping and clapping and clapping. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, and I saw the twinkle. I saw the, the okay, how long, how long, are you how long can I let this last? And, and, and you got it. When we got it, see? Oh, yeah. See, and that's what it is. Because those little gems, that's why if you're a comedian, I don't know how to fuck it. Any comedian could be depressed. Because our job is to make other people laugh. Yeah. By thinking of a shit that makes us laugh. You guys have brought people together. People didn't watch your movies just alone. We watched them with our friends, our yeah. best friends that yeah. we know for the rest of our lives, yeah. that we have a bond with forever. Yeah. You guys brought us together as like, as like always like an older brother going, you guys gotta check this out. And then hit and play. And then all of a sudden it's a group of dudes who will know each other, who will always remember where they were. Yeah. That's fucking, and you know, I gotta be honest with you, you guys have kind of defined friendship in like the comedy world. It's like, it really is. You guys, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Don Rickles and Bob Newhart, mm -hmm. like that's it though. Mm -hmm. Like of like best friends that go, we're here for each other, we're ride or dies. Yeah. It's yeah. the fucking best. Yeah. yeah. I look at, with me and Tommy, I look at you guys as an inspiration because you guys have held it together. You guys such a thriving business. You're still going after it. You're still getting after it. Where I was saying earlier, I go, I wonder if I'll make it another 20 years. You guys are still getting after it every fucking day. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, it's ride or die, like you say. It's a ride yeah. or die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I, I realized real early that there is a God. Yeah. And if you look at my wife, there's not only a God, but he really likes me. <laughs> I think about that all the time. I was like, I don't know what I did in a past life. I got, I got a really great life. Did you know that 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about? Before I started using Rocket Money, I thought I had roughly about 10 subscriptions, and I could not believe it. When they showed me, I was paying for over 30 subscriptions each month. Services like streaming services, fitness apps, 
delivery services, and it was never ending. Thanks to Rocket Money, I am no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills so you can grow your savings. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving its members up to $740 a year when using all the app's feature. I went on Isla's phone the other day. I went on Isla's phone the other day. I went on Isla's phone and found all the subscriptions on her phone. I put in Rocket Money, and I'm telling you, we got rid of so much money. Do it to your kids. Your kids sign up for these subscriptions, and you don't even know about it? Not to just on mine. I was through the roof, but my kids and Leanne, dude, stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash burning. That's rocketmoney.com slash burning. Rocketmoney.com slash burning. I'm going to start plating ramen. We're ready to plate ramen. Baby. <clears throat> What's ramen? Ramen's noodles. Oh, we're going to eat some yep. more? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, got, I got a ramen. You, you can eat as little or as much as you want. Oh, good. Yeah, we, are, you don't have to eat it. Just me plating it's all the show really needs. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, they, they how tuned in to see if we smoked weed together. That's yeah. it. Where did you learn to cook? Uh, On the road? It was my, no, 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 no. I, when, when I moved to L.A., um, when I moved to L.A., I got Where are you a, from? Tampa. Oh well. Yeah. So I got I got a grill, and I started I started enjoying the idea of like grilling steaks and uh-huh. and that and then and then that I and then at that period, I was trying to land what is now my wife, and so I started losing weight and I started watching the Food Channel, Food Network. Uh-huh. <laughs> losing weight and watching the Food Channel. I would get I would get drunk <laughs> and smoking weed and smoking weed. I'd get drunk, I'd get high, and I'd sit in front of the TV and watch Ming. It was like one of my favorite. Emerald was amazing. Bobby Flay. Emerald, Emerald was like, Emerald was the, I remember being high and he did the bam and I got it. Like I got why that's hell. And I, and I started laughing hysterically, but, uh, that's but that's, so cool, and, and then when, when we had Georgia, it kind of became like a little bit of our thing of like, just, we didn't have any money. So you'd go to Ralph's and you'd get groceries and you'd cook what was a great meal. And I started getting into like chefs like Jamie Oliver and I get his cookbook and then I learn things. And I gotta be honest with you, they're not a sponsor, but they should be. Uh, HelloFresh, all these great meal delivery kits, yeah. they, they teach you how to cook. And yeah. then you learn things about like fond and, and, and how to cook chicken, just how long to cook chicken, yeah, yeah. how to poach eggs. I, this is a sous vide. Have you ever worked with a sous vide? What is it? They're amazing. They just keep the water to t- oh, at the same yeah, temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you so then, dip the and it's, and it's yeah. all like very scientific. Yeah, so yeah. we're making poached eggs to go oh, in, the, oh. in the ramen and they just go in for eight, nine minutes and you pull them out, let them cool. It's, it's yeah. real simple. Uh, and then I and then I had this idea for this show was just I don't really cook, mm-hmm. but I love having great conversations and I like making people happy. Yeah. So I like like making that and then seeing the look on your eyes. Yeah, you're like yeah. that's actually good. Makes me excited. And so uh, we started doing this cooking show. My daughter and I are working on a cookbook right now. Really? Yeah. What's uh? uh Mexican, arty Mexican. Uh, uh, that that you can cook. Oh, can you talk to me about uh? Ch- the Chicano art movement. Sure, I'm obsessed with that. There's a oh, guy really? named Mr. Cartoon. Do you know who yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah, sure. And I and I got obsessed with, I got obsessed with that. And then even going back further, not Chicano, but like the, do you remember when you go into Mexican restaurants and they'd have the Inca warrior with the headdress uh-huh. and the painting? Like yeah. I got obsessed with that entire fucking genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story short, you can find out all you want to know by going to my museum in Riverside, California, called the Chich Marin Center for Chicano Art and Culture. And is this is your personal collection? Yeah, well, it's theirs now. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I, I'd love to go see it. I'd uh, love to go see it. There's, I find that, especially like the, the, the chalk ones, the pencil ones with the, yeah, yeah. with like the beautiful woman. Uh-huh. Like I, the ones that Danny Trujillo gets tattooed on his chest, like those. Well, that was the cover for the excellent tamale package. That was the only, <laughs> that was the only thing they had in the joint, man. When he was like the, the tattoo guy, yeah, the rapper for the tamales. <laughs> the guy in, in Saskatoon, I guess. Yeah. He had a, <laughs> they kicked him off a the tattoo of a, of a girl given donkey head <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> and so when he went to the beach, he had a cover it. Yeah, they made <laughs> him sit on his own beach. <laughs> <laughs> girl giving donkey head. <laughs> That's uh, fucking. I'm going to put some avocado in it. What are you guys, oh, are you guys fans of avocado? Absolutely, oh, man. Oh. You know what you can do with the seeds of the avocado? 
Plant another avocado tree? No, you can chop them up and put them with rubbing alcohol, and it's a painkiller. No, I saw it on YouTube. And I, I did it. I did it already. Uh, we got to college, and they're like, you know, you can smoke a banana peel. Yeah. And I was like, what? We did it in college. Yeah, we did it in college, too. Yeah. <laughs> I've smoked just about everything Electric there is to smoke. Electrical banana. <laughs> yeah, we smoked about everything. Uh, weed, uh, a cigarette with toothpaste on it. What? Jailhouse joint. We did that at Christian camp. We get high on Mondays and then go to the church meetings. Getting, oh, getting no, high no, and going no, to church is pretty that, fucking cool. That, that was my early brain. Uh, my early life was uh, Christian uh, camp, summer camp. Cadets. Really? Yeah. Wait, are you, do you, what do you, what's your, like, faith? What do you, do you believe in God? Do you believe in, like, my an religion? afterlife? Yeah. I am God. <laughs> I love this thought. I love this thought. You know, he, I don't, I, I just started kidding. not believing in death. I'm kidding. Because I go, hadn't no, happened to me. Say. Hadn't happened to me yet. No. I don't think it's going to happen. It's a transition. It's a transition. It's, this is our, death this is, is our like, space suit. Death is, you get ready to play a new tune. Yeah. That's all it is. Do you think about that, Cheech? Uh, increasingly. <laughs> I've always convinced myself throughout my life that I'm going to live to be 100. Uh, yeah. I think I am going to live to be 100. Now. I could live to be 100 yeah. if I look like this. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be 100 like my grandma. My grandma was a rough 100. Yeah. It's a cross, what, what it's your, your body looks background? like a cross between... Irish. 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 Irish, although towards the end of her life, she started questioning if we were Irish, and we we're like, oh, really? I think she's getting dementia. <laughs> she's I, like, there was Irish in my family, but they, it's uh, French, French Irish. They really? were Dylans, but from France. Ah. Oh. So the Irish, but from France. Yeah. Interesting. I'm, I get obsessed. Did you guys ever go through like a history phase? Oh, yeah. I'm fucking obsessed with Napoleon. Well, we did the documentary, so we, we did our whole DNA. I found out shit that my parents never told me. <laughs> it was weird, man. Because my mom, my mom married my dad, who was Chinese, and that yeah. was the big deal, you know, back in the day. And then I find out that her mother, my grandmother, was half native, half indigenous, half really? uh, uh, In First Nations. That's the first time I ever yeah. saw him when we got introduced, I mean, we had, and he had like a like leather pants and and a, and a nylon wife beater. Yeah. And and I'm thinking, what the fuck are you? I mean, it's like a, <laughs> a Mon Mongolian biker kind of thing, and he's and he's thinking the same thing as he's looking at me. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Cheech, I didn't know what Cheech was, and didn't care. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny, I don't really, I don't really remember, I guess it happened to like a different generation, but I, I don't really remember caring about certain things. Yeah, yeah. Like, I never cared if someone was gay. Uh, like, I never bought, like. Oh, I, yeah, no, no, I, I'm, I'm watching Two and a Half Men and, you know, all those shows, yeah. and, and they address it, you know, like we, we used to with Queer Wars. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we did all the. Politically incorrect shit you could do, and we wrote yes, you the guys book on did, it. yeah. And and we did that one bit called Queer Wars instead of Star Wars. <laughs> we did it for Arnold at his Mr. Olympia contest. Really? Yeah. You guys have had your list is insane uh, of people you guys know. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever meet Barbara Streisand? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I know. Shut the fuck. Well. Is there who haven't you met? Who smoked weed with you that you go? You smoke weed? Uh, Wally from Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> Little Richard. Little Richard? Smoked, I smoked John with Little Richard. I met Jack Nicholson one late, like that one time at a party. Yeah? And I was stoned, I just smoked up, and, and I just seen uh, The Last Detail, the movie. Yeah. And Nicholson, and there's a scene in there that was fascinated me, so when I saw Jack, I said, Jack, I love your movie. That one scene where you're in the mirror and you're combing your hair, you must have combed it for like 10 minutes. I said, and you have no hair. <laughs> I said, was that an improv? And he just looked at me and put his hand out and just moved, to the, moved me to the side. <laughs> <laughs> and walked straight into the bedroom. <laughs> That's great. It was so funny. Gentlemen, I am plating ramen. All right. I'm going to start with taking these eggs off to the side. I'm going to put them over here. We're going to cut those in half. I'm so excited. These are our noodles. We will plate the noodles first in the bottom. We've got, where's my ladle? 
I'm gonna ladle, 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 ladle. Let's get the broth first. Just dreidel, dreidel. <laughs> dreidel, 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 dreidel. We put a half of, uh, we give you a, cut it, an egg, yeah. as soft boiled as we can get it. Take an egg. You're gonna make some guy a nice wife someday. <laughs> I will. Look at this meat. This meat turned out absolutely perfect. I'm looking for my tongs, which should be right here. Uh, so I lo the thing I love about ramen is the presentation. Mm -hmm. And so the, wow. the meat on top for me is, and you don't have to eat all of it, but I just thought presentation wise, I'll make sure you have it. Okay. And, and it is fall apart in your mouth tender. This is the way my dog looks at me when I'm fixing his food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys need anything else to drink? Diet Sprite? I've got Diet Sprite. I've got diet root beer, I've got diet everything. Yeah, diet root beer. Whoa! Diet root beer is my favorite drink in the world. I, I, I've been drinking uh, ginger beer. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Oh, man. You like it? <laughs> it's so good. You like it? Yeah. Oh. Fuck yeah. <coughs> Love good. the beef. The beef's tender, right? Whoa. Oh, this is it, man. This, I mean, the beef really falls apart. Well, do you ever talk to your dad about moving to Canada in like the 20s as a Chinese guy? That must have been crazy. You know, I never really talked to my dad. <laughs> oh, okay. He's old school. He never said hello, he never said goodbye. Really? He would appear and he'd leave. <laughs> did he see much of your success? Oh, yep. oh, he did. He did. And he was very, very happy, but very, very Chinese. He took his parents to see Liberace in Las Vegas and then introduced them to Liberace. Liberace? And he... My dad lost it. He lost his he shit lost that his night. Shit, man. Really? Liberace came and sat with us and Liza Minnelli's on stage. And my dad's almost crawling over the table with a pen and pencil. Son, can you get his autograph? Really? <laughs> I said, Pop, we'll do it later. It ain't going nowhere. Wait, what, what was her Liberace like? What? Wasn't that tall? Really? Yeah. That's hey. the thing that always catches. You're taller than I thought you'd be. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're taller than I thought you'd really? be. Really? Would you think I was a midget or what? <laughs> no, it's just, it's like, it's like, when you watch those movies. Well, I'm getting shorter. You, well, your pants were up here, your <laughs> oh, shirt yeah. was here. Yeah, yeah. So it like compressed your body with a, like, oh, and, yeah. and you were jacked as fuck. Baby, in the olden days. I'm getting rejacked here. Actually. Yeah? Yeah. What do you guys do to work out? Eat, not eat. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this has been an absolute honor, oh, an absolute pleasure, oh, a yeah. joy, and a My dream come man. true. You guys are the ones that introduced me to laughing with friends. You're the ones that introduced me to laughing at movies. You're the ones that introduced me to marijuana. And no it is an absolute joy to be able to sit here, smoke weed, make you food, and, and, and make you laugh at least once. No Thank kidding. you very much. Okay. Yeah, let's light it one more time. Thank you very close. nice. Thank you. <laughs> We might as well. Does anyone in the crew want to come smoke weed with Cheech and Chong? Come on in. Come on in. So, come on this, in. This is a test. Yeah. Come on in. Just come in. Yeah, it's like, listen, this is a moment. If you get, if you get to smoke weed with Cheech and Chong, you do it. Stacy. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.